and it's usually you introduce yourself at this point. <laughs> so. My name is Augustin Shin. I'm from New Zealand. My parents are from Korea and currently living in Thailand. And what was your occupation? I used to be a banker uh -huh. and then I picked up a camera. I ended up owning a video editing agency and now I am head of growth at the studio. In this studio that we're in, right? The studio right here. Great studio, man, by the way. So welcome to the investment audit. You ready? Thanks for having me. No problem. No problem. Now, it's not going to be that serious. Right? We're going to be relaxed. So now let's go. All right. So first thing we're going to start with is kind of getting you a little bit of understanding about investing. So when you think of investing, actually, what comes to mind? Investing. Mm -hmm. mm. Ray Dalio, I think of you put your money somewhere and you get money back. That's pretty simple, straightforward, not too complex, right? Sure. All right, so we're going to talk about earned income, right? And that's usually like W-2, employment ship. You're employed currently right now, right? Yes, sir. All right, so you're employed here, right? Yes. So we got income. What is that usually that you usually make when it comes down to an annual basis? Annual basis. This yeah. is high salary at the moment. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so I, go, I get a commission. So, mm -hmm. But other than that, like a base salary of about 50K, Thai baht per month. Per month. Okay, that's not bad at all. That's good enough to underwrite a mortgage. Yes, sir. Now, we'll get to that a little bit later. As far as passive income, do you have anything like stocks or anything like that? I do have some stocks based in New Zealand company. Okay. Have we heard of the companies before? Yes, I have. I've oh. done my due diligence. Yeah? Do, would I know them? Probably not in New Zealand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so a lot of, so an airline in New Zealand, mm -hmm. some warehouse groups. Airline's not bad. They're not going anywhere. I don't think so. Especially New Zealand. Is it like a state-owned one or just... Yes. A, okay, that's better also. They definitely are not going anywhere. So you do have some money in there. That's yes. good. So we'll put a check for that. What, so I kind of will call that probably portfolio income because it's in your market account, right? Yes, sir. And then as passive income, do you lease or do you rent or how does it work? Currently renting at the moment. Okay. I don't have any other, I guess, real estate passive income coming in. Okay, no problem, no problem. Most people don't. Most people can feel that. I'm just a normie. Yeah, just, hey, I'm a normie too, right? <laughs> so we got taxes, right? So what's up with the taxes? What is your mentality around taxes when it comes to taxes? Mm, taxes. Yeah. I don't think anyone likes paying them, right? That's what people say. That's what people do say. <laughs> people do say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the man of the people. I do pay my taxes. Yeah? Yes, yeah, sir. Do you think it's like a social obligation to pay your taxes? Almost, yeah. I think yeah? To, you know, you know what they say. If, um, you know, death and taxes are the most two inevitable things in life. Yeah. So, all right, let's say, before I get at that, right? <laughs> no, let's go to the part where you say you feel like it's a social responsibility. Yeah. It, it, am I getting that correct? Yes. Okay, so explain that a little bit. I guess to be part of a system of a society mm -hmm. and people and you're employed under that system yeah. or you're generating money yeah. from people, um, I guess all all countries have a responsibility to look after its people, whether it's in terms of, I guess, providing infrastructure mm -hmm. or, I guess, healthcare and things like that. And I believe taxes contribute toward that. So I guess there is a, that moral, social, ethical obligation to yeah. give back. Yeah. I don't pay taxes. Yeah, I'm on Donald Trump time. Now, I'm not Wesley Snipes. That's illegal. I don't condone that, okay? And talk to your CPA because I'm not one. But when it comes to taxes, I read a book by Tom Wilwright, all right? And so we'll have people bring it up on the screen so you normies can have it. But Tom Wilwright helped me with rethinking and reshaping my mind around actually paying taxes. And when it comes down to investing, I take the same approach as like a social responsibility mm. that I get from investing back in said country. So instead of paying taxes, the government set up a system where they incentivize their citizens. Instead of just paying taxes, if you decide to invest in Thailand, if you decide to invest in New Zealand, or if you decide to invest in America, we'll give you deductions from your obligations to us. Because why will we take the money and then try to invest it in roads and schools and buildings when you took the money and you invested it in roads, buildings, and schools. You see what I'm saying? I do. So if people want to be more self-governed or, oh, the government, and they corrupt and they don't. If that be the case, then take stewardship of your own estate, your own portfolio, 
and distribute the money and you'll get the tax deductions. So you couldn't complain now about, man, the government take my taxes and they misuse it. They don't take my taxes and they don't misuse them. So this is the kind of what the book does by Tom Wilwright. He has massive amounts of content online, but I want to just kind of get that out there for you so you can kind of look into it. I'll send you some links, you'll have them, and you can start reading it and it will transform the way you see taxes. Definitely, they am definitely sold. Yeah, what was the book called again? Yeah, that sounds pretty enticing, right? Yeah. Well, he has multiple books, but the latest book, I always give people that because they'll have more cultural relevance, okay. is a win-win strategy. And it's seven ways the government will pay you to invest with them. Now, I'm paraphrasing the title, but it's basically win-win strategy. Okay. And then it's by Tom Wilwright. Tom Wilwright. And then once you type that in Google, you'll get the book, right? Okay. Read through the book. It's a great, most people don't like reading tax books. You know, they're like, oh man. But the funny part is the IRS code, at least in America, around 10% of it goes towards the collection of taxes. A lot of it is not about taxes. It's only a small portion. And a smaller portion about the deductions. So it's not like you have to go through everything. It really addresses a lot of other things. And so most people will be like, I got to read 5,000 pages of taxes. Not really. A lot of it's not actually for the average citizen. It's well, a lot of other stuff. That's definitely good to know because most people are pretty put off by tax books. Yeah, tax yeah, exactly. In general. Yeah, and that's why I leave it to the CPAs. You never do one thing. You never cheat the tax man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't teach you. No, I'm just kidding. You you don't choose that. You don't cheat on the IRS. You don't cheat on a CPA and you don't cheat on your lawyer. Mm. All these guys, they cost upfront expenses, but they save you on the back end. So I kind of my mentality around governments is they're my partners in business. They're not enemies. They're not my competition. Right. I work with them. Right. That's a very interesting perspective. Exactly. And once you view it like that, you become more friendly to the reality that government holds the right. key, all right? So you can revolution all you want, but you might end up in a jail. <laughs> so, all right, so taxes, we kind of addressed that. We had the Tom Will, right? That's going to be some good stuff for not only you, but you normies out there who need it. And also, when it comes down to business, you work for this company, right? And what is your perspective as far as starting your own or actually just also proving yourself and proving yourself capable of possibly working towards junior partnership you see these things have you ever thought about that as far as in your career yes absolutely and i've started and failed uh two businesses before yeah one in e-commerce and one in video editing so it's it's really not for the faint-hearted you know yeah yeah i went in you know just guns blazing all gung-ho and just being my ego through the roof and being like oh, i can make it you know yeah. if a corporation's paying me 100k per year i so used to be an ex-banker then i'm sure i can generate that 100k for myself yeah but it's a lot harder than people say. Okay, so wait, you were making 100K winning in life. You know only a couple small percentage of people on the planet make 100K. We're talking 100K USD? We're talking 100K NZDs, which is equivalent to about 75K USD. Okay, but still high, still high up there too. Still an upper income. Okay, basically. yeah, a little upper income. So you left that yes. to pursue your own endeavors. Now, tell me what was your mindset behind that and going to pursue that? I think I was just innately unhappy because mm. I I guess I'm a little bit anti-system. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just didn't I hear like, you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like being told what to do by a certain someone, being told to dress a certain way. Yeah. So I was just like, screw it. Let me try something. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I was in the military for about seven years. They told me how to dress. Right. They told me how to shave. But... I dealt with it, and I think that helped me also because sometimes we have to learn to do what we don't like to do because life can't only be doing what you want to do. But I assume you got that because you were actually in the world. You already did what you didn't want to do, which was study, prepare, go get the job, find it, and work in it. How long did you work before you really just was like, you know what, flip the middle finger and you left? Mm, about seven years in the banking industry. <laughs> Dang, seven. almost a decade. Yes, sir. Dang. Seven long years. And I, I love how you say that. Yeah, you can look at it two ways. You can be like, oh, okay, screw that. I didn't, you know, I was working under someone. But at the same time, I learned a lot of, I learned how the world actually worked. A yeah. Lot of processes, a lot of systems, people skills. Just, yeah, show up on time, do mm -hmm. things properly. You know, a lot of little things that get 
um, they get left out a lot. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So differently. And going back to your question of, I guess, how do you view kind of entrepreneurship? Uh, yeah. I believe there was a quote by Naval Ravikant. I'm not sure if- Uh-oh, sending out quotes. Okay, here we go. Here we go. The first quote of the century. <laughs> Don't mess it up now. <laughs> Well, basically, I'm probably going to butcher it, but he believes that one way to, to financial freedom is having equity in a business um, because as you grow with the business, then obviously your paycheck gets bigger and bigger. And mm -hmm. yeah, just, yeah. So find investments, find equity in business and slowly pursue your path of truth, yeah. mastery and financial freedom. Okay, now you fail miserably. Miserably. <laughs> now, I, I did too. I told you I opened up a business in Kenya in Africa and then I failed miserably so I get it <laughs> I was like yo entrepreneurship is not for me I need to be an investor <laughs> but net net um you know you take risk and you you know I guess when people go to school most of the time A through C mm -hmm. or D A and B true or false right yeah so they're just kind of already indoctrinated to say don't fail but I think in investing and in everything, even in science, it's a part of this failure because it's the trial and errors, right? That create the new invention. Absolutely. So I think what did you really learn from those failures and highlighting those failures for people can understand that a little bit more because they're like, you failed. You're a sucker. Why should I listen to him? And it's like, well, Elon failed. So you're not going to listen to him. Oh, so Yeah, exactly. And I think it's just how yeah i mean you never really fail if you don't quit so yeah 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 yeah. it's you know four three times get up four and i think it's just that notion of just continuing trying until you reach your dreams mm -hmm. you've got to have a plan you can't just willy-nilly start a business with a you know gung-ho and just being like exactly. okay i'm gonna make it like i did but <laughs> no it's good so you fail i'm gonna put this in the computer I'm fail yeah <laughs> no just kidding <laughs> shout out to all the but, 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 but you never gave up so yes, let me put that in the computer right <laughs> still fighting my friend <laughs> maybe the algorithm and the ai can help you out so alternative investments this guy y'all know how i feel about y'all bitcoinians now you said you invested in crypto i have dun 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 play the sound effect editor <laughs> but <laughs> okay what's going on with that Okay, I'm not sure if invest is the right term to for crypto. Yeah, I invested back in well, I put money in back in 2017. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty good bull run. Uh, I think it was at about 16k USD, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I purchased about ten thousand dollars New Zealand, so about six k USD. Dang, uh, huge amount of money. For me, for yeah, me, like myself, um, and I lost it all. Lost it all? I invested in a lot of shit coins. So, you know, I was really hearing things. Uh, I couldn't really think for myself, mm. my due diligence, and I did lose 5,000. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, that's a part of the game. Yeah. yeah you know, but uh, editor, highlight that. All right. Because one of the things, shout out to Bo, one of the things people don't do is that they, all you hear is about is a Bitcoin millionaire, right? Driving down in a Lamborghini, uh, all up in Dubai. That's all you hear is like, oh man. And then you'll see some guy crying like, I became a trillionaire. And then that's all you know. So you really don't get the stories of where people don't, it don't pan out, right? Absolutely. You don't hear the failures like me, you know? Yeah, you, you hear the pumpers, okay. but not the ones who got dumped on, right? And so, hey man, one of the things for Bitcoin, I guess, what is it that got you interested in Bitcoin? Mm. Did you see it as like, I could make an opportunity or did you believe in a story? Uh, I think I convinced myself that I believe the story. Yeah. Get rich quick scheme. <laughs> also got a really addictive personality. So I was just like, oh, shit, what's, this, what's this new hot thing? Let me go all in. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, obviously it didn't go so well. But I think uh, what it taught me was a lot of financial literacy and also that. Yeah. You shouldn't invest in anything that you know people tell you to do. Do your do do your damn research. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, and then think for yourself, and then only put in money that you're willing to lose. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Uh, did you, on top of investing in it, did you believe in the story? It's funny because you you were a banker. Yes. And you know, for a normie terminology of it, I'm pretty sure you had a better title than that, not just banker. Yeah. But were you like? A banker and then you was like yeah f the banks this is not controlled by the federal reserve in the new world order was that you you already know yeah yeah <laughs> i was in the bank but i was super anti-banker yeah for sure <laughs> by the water cooler we got an intruder here is <laughs> with bitcoinians okay cool and what was so you this is funny too because you were in banking mm. 
and you still were able to take on that personality or that understanding of like anti-banking, even though, and I guess maybe let me know you were seeing things inside the culture that you probably didn't like. And then that kind of helped fuel that too. Oh well, yeah, maybe? definitely. Definitely. I think, um, well, Elon Musk describes it best. Money is just a number on a database. Mm. And I saw thousands of accounts during my time banking. And all it really is, is just like, you know, plus 14,000 here, minus 200,000 home loan here. And uh, essentially, I viewed it as just more, okay, money allows you to, I guess it gives you freedom to pursue certain things, but it doesn't really define you. Um, I'm not entirely sure where I'm going with this, but yeah, I... I saw everything and then I was like, no, screw the system. Let's, yeah. let's try something different. Yeah, no, no, I get it. I get it. Mm. And the reason we talk about that is because, uh, you know, I kind of help people on mindset. Investing is about the numbers, underwriting property. I got many YouTube videos, how to get a f half a million dollar house in America with no money down. Mm. You can make 5,000 after you end up following the formula, getting the grants and doing it by the way I'm saying. But people still have a mindset problem. So underwriting it, calling up the lender, they get stopped before that even happens. Cause they're like, mm, you know, I'm black, I can't do it. Right. Or, you know, whatever, I'm a woman and I can't do it, whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't like me, the patriarch. So many people got excuses for why they X, Y, Z, but if they just do it, you still got to do it anyways. Yeah. I'm not even going to argue normies, all right? <laughs> you still got to go out there and just do it or lose. All right. So this is what I always get into the mentality. People be like, show the numbers. But as you know, as a banker, there's many people in suits. Many people got degrees, mathematicians, math magicians, analysts and whatever. And they still don't know what's happening in the market. They still don't know what's happening in the macro. And so it's more at play than just numbers and data and charts. And Absolutely. And if I can speak on that just a yeah, little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because I've seen plenty of people, plenty of bankers, lawyers, doctors earning more than 200, 300K per year, but they just didn't know how to manage their finances. Their outgoings were larger than their incomings. And it was all really a shambles. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's why the guy who does the financial audit is good. But also, once you get that house in order, you got to make your money work for you. Every, every dollar I ever earned, I've seen them as soldiers. Mm. They're my team. That's my family. Now, somebody say, you're shallow. I am. But no, <laughs> it's really seeing your money as soldiers that you need to deploy in the battlefield. This comes from my military background now. That's interesting. But I can't do all the work while the money's just sitting at the bank, like, <laughs> yes, sir. chilling, drinking up all the Kool-Aid, <laughs> you know, relaxing, AC, watching TV and Netflix. I'm out here working 70 hours, 60 hours a week. Mm. My money's sleeping. That's not how it's supposed to work out. So I attempt to look for investment opportunities where I get my money on the streets. I get them out. Now people say, what does that look like? Right? Yeah. What does it look like to put my money out on the streets? And this is where we're going to talk about. So let's go back to the stock market because I was able to be very successful with that. Most of my net worth comes from the stock market. And so when you think about stock investing, what do you think? Numbers, charts. Remember what we talked about? Do you think 70 year plan, 70 years later when you're 88, you got $2 million? Or <laughs> do you think I'm going to be in the charts day and night looking at the candlestick it's gonna go up and down and when it take a dip and lift off i'm gonna buy for sure which one is it i think i'm more of a long-term guy okay. more of the boring index fund guy yeah due to my previous failures and fuck-ups i was just like okay maybe i should look at uh, money as a long-term strategy yeah. however i am very very tempted by all these quick rich get, mm -hmm. get rich quick schemes and yeah. i am tempted but i don't want to find my own anymore yeah and so we talked about this offline but i just want to highlight it so when we really talk about the investing mm -hmm. aspect, remember I talked about you're on the ground as a consumer, as a normal person. You see the trends, you experience the product before they become charts in somebody or some analyst sheet. One of the biggest things I actually was doing research, so I can spell this out a little bit better, is Apple has done massive amounts of things with Apple Watch, right? And they're doing massive amounts of investing in the medical industry. Right? With the information that's coming from the oxygen readers, you see what I'm saying? The ECGs, they're reading people's hearts. What they want to do eventually is get their devices in the medical industry to be integrated in a system of ministering medicine. It's going to take some time. But do you think a guy in the bank or Wall Street is going and talking to the nurses 
to gather the intel and see how much it's a pro or a con. I don't think they are. I don't think so, too. Right? No. Because they've been schooled to look at charts. Yeah. To look at the numbers. What's the PE ranking? Yo, then, okay, and then you flip it and you get it. <laughs> That's what they do. So they're in a different industry. They're in a different game. We're outside of Wall Street. The outsiders, I call us. And we're able to make moves and plays from a retail's perspective. Mm. So we can do the due diligence. No different than a realtor. You got a house. They're going to look at, okay, what, what did this house sell? What did that house sell, right? Um, here's the contract. They know this part. They know the numbers. They know the data. But you have to go talk to the neighbors to figure out you got a drug dealer that lives in the community. That's not in the numbers, right? Hmm. They're going to be like, oh, dang. You got a crack <laughs> it, you know? There's prostitution down the street. You don't really know these things until you really get on the ground. That's where we come in. That's where outside investors. That's where you're like, I can't live without Apple. Hmm. I'm going to invest. If you had invested in Apple, it would have been up. Now, let me give you an example. You know Zara. Zara, yes. Right? So Zara, 10 years ago, well, in its history, it's over 800% up. Mm. 10 years ago, you could have got it for somewhere around $20. Well, wow. Now it's 38. That's not much, but it's more, right? Zara is just one example. Louis Vuitton. You be wearing Louis Vuitton, don't you? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I don't have that. So let's say a year ago. Or let's say five years ago, right? If you would have invested, it would have been up 177%. Right. But these are obvious things. This is nothing like you got to look at charts to understand this. Apple, mm. right? Five years ago, whatever you invested would have been up 397%. You see what I'm saying? These are blue chip companies. This ain't, oh man, I heard about Neo. They're going to crush Tesla. Ain't wrong. I heard about Nikola. They're going to crush. Tre no, don't take gambles like that. We're talking about blue chip. Companies you cannot live without. Well, I feel like how do I how do I see these signs? You know, just as just an use consumer. It. Yeah, you know Apple. Have you never been in an Apple and you see the doors open and people look like Jumanji <laughs> coming trying to get the iPhones? <laughs> these people out here be running. <laughs> people be camped out. Yeah, definitely, man. Day and night, Kid Cudi. Mm. It's ridiculous. You just sit back and be like, man, they're gonna keep selling. Another example, a guy said he went to a restaurant yeah. in America called the Cheesecake Factory in P.F. Chains. Right? He was like, oh, man, every time I go, the line is there. I just hate it. Now, if you're a normie just there for the food, you hate it. But if you're an investor, you're like, all right, look at my business. You super can relax. My money is working for me. Mm, this company is doing good. Yeah. <clears throat> so you're not mad. Walmart. Come on now. Mm. You've seen all them normies always at Walmart shopping. Costco's. You probably don't know that one. <laughs> visa card. Yes. I had to pay these guys. But I paid you with a visa card five years ago. If you would have invested in visa, you have been up 100%. Mm. So these are the things that are just common. They're not like you got to see some analytical charts, some candlesticks. You don't have to do that. And that's shorter than 30 years later down the road. Though... A, you know, 30 years, 60 year plan. That's not bad. Still do that. Just invest a little bit smaller and put your money in an active blue chip stock companies. And then you should be OK. But talk to your financial advisors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got that. So we talked about the market. Let's get down to the tools and the foundations. I call this the foundation of investing. OK. All right. I got everybody need to know you need these tools. I'm ready. Like the caveman needs a knife or a spear. You need these tools. Right. I think he had that. I don't think he had guns, but he might have had that. Different. So cash flow quadrant, you know what that is? Uh, no. Could you explain that for me? You know what the cash flow quadrant is. The cash flow quadrant is by Rob, Robert Kiyosaki, right? Yes. And so you got employees, small business, and then around small business, you can also say specialists like mm -hmm. doctors and lawyers. These two quadrants, the employee or the small business or the specialist, get taxed the most. Remember that tax man coming back at you, right? <laughs> Business owners, but they own a system, right? So they can step away and the business will keep operating. The small businessman, he got to show up to work every day. You know, it circles around him. He's the carpenter. He's the videographer, mm. right? Then the investor. The investor has their money work for them. Their money goes out and finds ways to make more money and bring them back home. Yeah? Yeah. So, my, you know, I'm pimping my money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so on top of that, 
that's the investing quadrant, right? Or the cash flow quadrant, excuse me. And so with the cash flow quadrant, employee and small business, what do you have to trade when you go to work? A lot of time. Right? Mm. How much can you pay to get time back? That's priceless. Exactly, right? For sure. So people are trading a lot of time. And that's okay. I traded time for a goddamn 14 years. We're so doing our stripes, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. You got to earn your stripes. Definitely. You got you to you go from you know middle school to high school to college. Yeah. yeah. I skipped elementary because I was just smart. No, I'm just kidding. Really? No, 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 no. no. I, no. <laughs> I got bad grades and all of it. You know, I got no degree and none of that stuff. Well, you don't need any of that. No. Right? It's, you chose to self-educate. Exactly. Self-educate, and I call it self-directed investor. Beautiful. Right? Yeah. Maybe self-made investor, right? That means I design myself. So no, that's a Nipsey Hussle thing. But go ahead. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Sorry to interrupt, but I guess investing can't only just be money, but it can be a knowledge and different aspects of yeah. Uh, knowledge is at an all time high, mm -hmm. so we're not as short of knowledge. No, especially on YouTube. Right? You hear a lot of normies say, "Man, the school system didn't show. My teachers didn't know." Of course, your mom didn't show you. You can't blame your mom. Don't blame the politician. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing that. You have to look at yourself. Use the smartphone to be smart. Yes. Right. Love and it. once you get the information, it's about acting mainly because I know a lot of people who are in analysis paralysis. They analyze and they're paralyzed because all the data, like I told you earlier, this is why the investment audits here to kind of able to help you to think about ways to say, OK, what do I put my money in? It might not be Apple. It might not be Costco's or the companies I mentioned, mm. but you could re you know, say, oh, Guitar Hero, Crocs. Like, you can start looking at these companies and saying, okay, I get it now, okay. And I understand how I'm outside of Wall Street and what they're doing is different and what I'm doing is different, but they both can be successful. Right, Because right. the average analysis or the analysts on Wall Street, they underperformed the S&P 500. So 80% of them got suits, ties, MITs to Yale to Harvard. None of them are outperforming or outbeating the market. So nobody has a magic crystal ball, right? Mm. But what you can do is get solid, good companies like Tesla. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shout out to Tesla. Shout out to Elon. Never bet against Elon. <laughs> All right. So we got that. Don't trade time. When you're an investor, you trade the money. And you can do all four, a combination of three, stuff like this. Yeah. yeah? So don't be pent up like, well, I'm an employee and I'm lame. No. All right. And once you invest that money, what do we become then? Partners with the government. That's your friend. Okay. That's your friend. Okay. That's your if friend. there's one lesson I've learned from today, it'll be look at governments differently for sure. Read Tom Wheelwright. He's going to help you normies and he's going to help you figure it out. Interesting. And he'll help you with some basic people are not. That's going to be a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. Yeah. If they hate or they're angry at the government for multiple reasons. Right. But as I said that offline to you, right? Like if you don't have your finances in order, if you're not, making great money and passive income and portfolio and your budget is out of whack and you're in debt. You can't say the nation's at debt and the politicians you're in debt and you only manage 60,000 bond or $70,000. They manage trillions of dollars. Mm. Which one is harder? It's a different game, isn't it? Completely. Super, very different game. Yeah. And yours is a more simplistic game. Make it make sense. It doesn't. Perfect. So next I mean, one is the the return on investment quadrant, right? And I'll have them bring that up so you guys can see it on the screen. But that is a combination of, let's go back to your property. You rent, right? Yeah. Uh, is there a reason why you haven't figured out a way to purchase? What's the reason you haven't purchased ownership-wise? Yeah, in New Zealand, it was... Here or Tyler. Oh, or okay. New Zealand, whichever yeah. one. For sure. In New Zealand, it's qu uh, quite steep barrier to an entry and for millennials go ahead. and that's prob probably the mindset that there I'm we go there we go same time it's um yeah i think you need to earn a combined income of around two hundred thousand nzd which is around 150 uh usd in order to get into the property market to to get a loan and to purchase really it's one of the most expensive countries in the world is it okay yeah, okay okay there. and will it change if you like when you do get the loan do, are they strict on single family only yeah, or do duplex strict. exist? They, they, they do do guarantees and they do um, do 10% deposits and things like but that. But do you, can you get a duplex? Yep, you can. You can. You, you can get, get a triplex. Yeah, for sure. A quad. Yeah. So if you get a quad, 
and you use the rental income, mm. does it help underwrite the property also? Absolutely, it does. So there you go. Yeah. So if you're making a certain amount and the average is that certain amount, and then you go the quadplex route, the cash flow works towards your debt to income ratio and it helps underwrite the deal. So it's not only you working towards money to pay off the mortgage, it's also the people that live in the other three units or two units that give you money that go towards the mortgage. Therefore, giving you ability to buy a higher value property and your ability to, or have a lower debt to income ratio. And you see what I'm saying? You can play the equity game from there, but can I challenge you on one thing? Go ahead. There's obviously that argument. You can play that long-term uh, rental property game. Can you also find your way to investing in riches without real estate? Because simply because uh, I think I was anti against the fact that if I purchase a home, I'd have to kind of lock in into a geographical location, look after the property. Obviously, there's property managers and whatnot, mm -hmm. but I kind of wanted to maintain that autonomy, that sovereignty, that where I can just, okay, I can just sell everything and pick up my stuff and go to a different country like I have. Yeah. No, no, I get it. I get it. And I hear that a lot of people, especially with millennials, since you move more. Yeah. Normies, old and maybe working at one state for their whole life. They'd be like, me and Bubba, we were we were back here when the coal mine just opened. Exactly. Like, and you're like, oh, dang, you ain't going nowhere. So I get it, you know, and definitely chase different locations for opportunities. But on average, the person usually doesn't move more than a year. Mm. Right? They're not moving every six months. It's usually like a year, even longer, maybe three or so. And with that being said, depending on how the deal is structured with the bank, it's no problem. Because once you move, depending on how much equity is in the property at time, especially like you said, for New Zealand, it's a little bit more. In America, we're putting down 3%. Mm. So if you're putting around 10 or 20, then possibly they'll allow you to switch it to a different term. Meaning like prior, it was a owner occupied, primary residence type of loan and mortgage. But once you decide like, hey, after two years, I'm leaving, I'm taking this job opportunity, then it will be like, okay, but it's be an investment. And then as long as you still have 20% of the equity in there, it's okay. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because from the banker, not even the banker, from the lender, they have more confidence on real estate and putting money behind that than your business, than your barber shop, than your noodle shop. Yeah. <laughs> Beyond anything else, car loan, your credit card, all that is risky. There's no guarantee that they can recoup some of the money. You might buy it all on weed, right? And then they can't get it back. And what would they do even if they did? You know? <laughs> Sell it to the Chapo. So at the end of the day, they can go get the house. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And if they go get the house, then they recoup some of the funds. So it's one of the most secured ways for lenders to recoup their funds. And it's the oldest tradition. And so therefore, it's easier to approve. It's easier to work out a structure for it. So people think that they're going to be so binded by that property, but it's not really. At a certain point, you move, you get a property manager to run the estate. They'll run it better than you if you find the right property manager, right? Yeah. And then you have a property manager, split a little bit more money, but it's okay. And then at the end of the day, you got equity being built up, the debt being paid off. This is where the return on investment comes up quadrant, right? Mm -hmm. You have appreciation, debt pay down, cash flow and tax benefits all together creating one re rate of return right and so on this chart it kind of shows like 11 percent for appreciation right uh four percent on the debt pay down paying off your equity right cash flow is about four percent you're like oh that's not a lot that doesn't beat inflation but we still have the other things we talked about the tax benefit around another three and then totaling for about 23 percent of a total reinvestment other than that, any investment, business, and et cetera, you're not going to get the tax benefits to offset the money you're making. And with real estate, it's one of the areas where the government wants to partner with you. They want to do business with you. So therefore, you can go for earned income and say, hey, man, I know I have my deductions in the real estate, but now I want to have deductions with my earned income also because I have extra deductibles. Mm. Talk to your CPA. You have to find the right guy that specializes in real estate. That's one of the big things, yeah? You got Most people don't got that. Mm. So you ca that makes a little bit more sense, yeah? It definitely does, yeah. Okay, so we got the return quadrant. We got that. Now, we're going to get a little controversial. I'm going to throw a haywire at you. Okay. Now I'm going I'm to add this. I add it for everybody, but specifically, I'm trying to help you normie men out, okay? <laughs> All right, so when it comes down to the next one, personal life. This is one of the things that cut people down. 
So what's your idea behind one marriage and then two also children? Mm. Cause these are lovable liabilities. Lovable and lovable, lovable, but the dang liabilities. So, and don't think y'all gonna get Beyonce, the next power cup. I don't want to hear all that. All right, most of y'all got just a girl who want to chill. All right, she want to go. She want to chill. All right, and even if she works, she gonna get tired. Now, there's some we gotta say that for normies. There's an exception to the rule. Okay, your girl flipped a trillion dollars in real estate. That's one. All right, but okay. When it comes to marriage, uh, especially over here in Asia, when it comes to marriage <laughs> and it comes to actual kids, what's the plan? Well, this is interesting. I think South Korea has the one of the lowest birth rates. And yeah, just due to, you know. You a globalist? Rate. I am a globalist. Yeah. Mr. International over here. Also a normie at the moment. However, I, I think marriage is a bit of an outdated concept. And I don't see myself forking out maybe 20, 30 grand in order to for get- the wedding. Yeah, yeah, just to put a piece of paper and yeah. a ring on her finger. I honestly don't see that happening. And children, uh, if they come, they come, but I'd like to be settled. I'd like to be organized. Well, there's protection. And Kids just don't drop out the sky. See, like normies, I'm gonna be holding y'all down. <laughs> I'm ripping. You know? It just happened. No, a woman has a small allotted window where it's possible. Mm. So it's not even easy when you're shooting like, going crazy and then there's protection not contraception because some people are like it makes me sick okay cool but there's rubbers now i'm not saying it's as you're bad i'm just saying investments when it comes to kids and a family wife and wife husband and husband women and wife whatever mm. partnership it eats on your finances too and especially if you're in a traditional structured in some ways where the man takes more of a burden of paying for things Right? Definitely. So you're living at a 60 40. You're like, no, me and my chick, we go half. I open up the books. It's more 60 40. <laughs> it's more 70 30. Right? More often than not. Yeah, yeah, more often than not. And uh, what is it? Uh, her money is her money. My money is our money. Like stuff like that. Yeah, happy wife, happy life. All yeah, that stuff. all that stuff. Yeah. Right? That's going to kill you guys. So always just put that in there. And the same for women have some bad things too. They consume a lot. So. Women, y'all come on the channel, I got smoke for you too. <laughs> but net net, I always say that because I want men to go out and build themselves first, mm. right? Don't let your old parents, old school style, try to hurry and rope you into things. Their economy was different, right? They were gonna work on a farm, it was already set in stone. There's nothing to talk about, yeah. right? But now you have to trot out your own way. You need about at least 10 years to go balls to the wall, risk it all, do what you did, fail, switch up, leave a six figure job. You wouldn't have did that if you had a kid and a wife staring at you. But since you're single, you're like, bump it, right? So you have more freedom to figure these things out and it allows you to invest more on your self. Definitely, and I think that's really helped me just look in the mirror and just be like, okay, the, the reason I'm in this position right now, it is my fault, you know? And there ain't no one else gonna save me my parents ain't gonna save me no, they you know? yeah yeah my girl ain't gonna save me so definitely not <laughs> and we've got the power of the internet as well so yeah. it really you know the information is out there and i think i'm right now in a position in life where i'm just going fully monk mode just working on there we go the monk mode can we do the fist bump is that okay yeah <laughs> monk mode, <laughs> monk mode. <laughs> like what monk mode and monks are watching like we don't do that but net net yeah monk mode is a is a great way i think men should go monk mode go their own way for a bit all right men gonna be like what am i gonna do i got needs calm down you base animal all right relax zen out go see the real monks out here they're zen and out okay and then you'll figure it out but one of the things i want to just also get across is i'm not against marriage what i just tell men and women but mostly men is be a steward of your family and your estate and take control because mm. the moment you leave the court to figure out your drama between you and your wife and your family and the lawyers, it creates problems. Yeah. So have a prenup and a post month. And then I don't say from the perspective of, man, make sure she don't get nothing. No, I'm saying have a foundation of what happens to your state if the worst happen, not just death, but also divorce, etc. So now the state can look at a basis and then litigate. You know, we just have to, and I know I'm not anti anti woman or anything like that. Love women's rights, all that stuff. But the facts are, is that yeah, currently prenups 
are something that are needed and yeah uh, holding that masculine frame and also just having that conversation with your partner is of extreme importance because if shit goes under then you're going under man yeah you, you gotta have it figured out your family is going under because you, this is what it was a family unit and so and then everybody would like to blame the court or the judge or your wife and it's like or or the husband and it's like y'all had no of uh, like everybody else is dealing with y'all garbage y'all coming to the court mm. We getting divorced and separated. They're like, bro, we're just chilling here at the court. And now you're like, yeah, but what happened is one night he was drunk and she's like, one night she was, and they're like, bro, yeah, y'all don't have no agreement about this. Like, <laughs> and so that's the problem. It's on you to take control, you and your partner of your own affairs. Don't look to other people and they're going to prey on your emotions. And that's the worst time that you and your wife or your ex-wife or your husband should figure things out for the kids and yourself. I would agree. Right. Yeah. So I always just provide that. People are like, it's an investment audit. Or what you talking about my family for? Because, you know, a lot of normies are going to say the most important investment you can make is on your woman. <laughs> so therefore, it's a part of the investment audit. All right. So you just got to figure that out and make sure that's uh in control whether you're going to get married or not mm. yeah mm. and for the kids part definitely because kids well in thailand kids still be working a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. from like, like three years in that noodle shop working the seven living right but in the west kids are on ipads they're not contributing to anything that the family is doing so you got to look at that and be like i got to have my money passive mm. i got to have my portfolio ready and this is what i call men outsourcing your per, uh, your provision and protection yes yeah, you're not going to go out here and protect your family with fighting. Just move into a good neighborhood, right? That's how you protect your family, right? Step one. Step one, right? But your money needs to be right to move into that safe neighborhood, right? Yeah, for sure. And then also on top of that, provision. She's like, get more money, but be home more. Mm. You're like, it's impossible. I'm a hustler. And it's like, no. Purchase Apple, right? Yeah. Purchase stocks, own passive real estate. You could be home more with your wife and your kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So men haven't been given those routes to be like, ah, oh, you're right. I can make seven thousand, eight thousand a month in passive, and I don't need and have to always work. I can scale to fifteen because I'm still hungry, mm -hmm. and still spend twenty with my family. Yeah? yeah. And that's a better way of looking at investing for the family and investing for finance. All right. So let's talk about self-development sure because i think we talked about a lot of stuff that you know you do yourself but also where do you see yourself for the next five to ten years and tangibly what are you going to work towards getting that because you know if i throw that up the norm, norm like, well you know as long as the cosmos and the stars are aligned <laughs> and once pluto meets aristotle like what so in an understandable way <laughs> absolutely i want to be you know seaside a nice nice condo i want an online business generating 50k a month i want a beautiful woman by wait myself. usd usd let's go usd let's Dang, he won numbers bro like that, i ain't even got that no <laughs> but that's um kind of the direction that i want to go and to tangibly do that i guess i'm you know putting in study um uh, from figures like yourself from elon musk from entrepreneurs yeah 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 just investing in myself and want to start i guess working towards entrepreneurship investments um and you know calculated investments albeit so yeah and let me ask this question too because i ask this to a lot of people because i let them challenge their own ideas about their life and they're like dang that, i might not want to do that and it's just because when they map it in their head they also don't like ask themselves questions about what they just mapped out right? yeah and so excuse me james bond calling me <laughs> but not, <laughs> shout out to james shout out to james in Obama, I'm black, I know him. So when they actually plan stuff, example, I had a friend. I asked him, what do you want to do? He's like, man, I want to go remote. I want to work remote. I want to be overseas in Australia with my girl. I love her, you know, I've been the knee, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Started crying a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, all right. And I was like, okay, you want to work overseas? Da, da, da. You want to do remote? He was like, yeah, I'm going to do cybersecurity. And he was doing it. He was executing. Yeah. I said, is that really what you want? He was like, yeah, why? I was like, okay, so you want to be overseas with your girl in Australia, on the computer, crunching numbers in Australia, in an amazing view, but crunching numbers for about, let's say, 10 hours. And then you still need to study afterwards because, you know, cybersecurity, software engineering, you got to study continuously because there's new languages, new techniques. He was like, 
dang, yeah, I, I hate that. And I'm like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I don't want that. I'm like, exactly. So I told him about investments and what they could do and how they could create that passive income. He's like, you like, well, I want that. And so what he really wants, he just needs a certain amount of money every month so he can live overseas and just chill and do whatever he wants to do throughout that day. But he's not obligated to work eight hours each day throughout the week. You see what I'm saying? Definitely. So it really wasn't a remote job. That was just a tool. And it was the only tool he knew how to get overseas. And then he was like, dang, well, I'm still working. Yeah. So I, I really just want to be free. That's the financial freedom part. 100%. And, and I people don't see that. Location freedom, time freedom, I think is, and financial freedom, obviously, is mm -hmm. everything I think, what every human really desires in their mind, I think. I believe so. And it sounds like that your friend used that remote job as a vehicle to kind of propel him. But I think it's up to the individual to have those lessons, to have those learnings. Yeah, most definitely. But some people never see it. Because mm -hmm. once he took back, he was like, dang, okay, I'll invest some of my money so I can get some money every month. So I won't be getting yelled at by my girl now because I always got to be in the computer. That's right. You made it overseas, but you're not quite there yet. And I said that to say, when it's 50,000 a month, right? Maybe it could be around 10. Because what happens is when you become completely free, you become a full-time self-director of mm. the state of you. Mm. There's nothing else in the way. I've made way more money when I've been completely withdrawn from everything. So yes, at a point I had 5,000, for example, cash flow. I didn't try to get 20 first. I got 5,000. Once I had a whole day to myself, because I'm free now in Thailand, paying low expenses, then it was like, well, I'll create another five. And it became 10. But it was because I had so much time to invest on my estate. I didn't have to split it with my job. You see what I'm saying? Definitely. So once you become, just make enough to get out. And once you get your freedom papers, you can do more with freedom than you could do with enslavement. Mm. Mm. So that's what it really is. And I don't want to call a job a slavery because people are like, I'm a slave to the job. And it was indentured servitude, but it's voluntary. Right? It is voluntary. I'm like, it's slavery in America. <laughs> right. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Slaves are like, what? Educate yourselves. You know, somebody somewhere <laughs> in a country where they're really working hard are like, man, the ignorance of these people. Oh, so sick. this is, I'm just trying to help and provide people with that. Mm. Hopefully those tools can make them think about it. Like, okay, maybe 10,000. And then when I'm a, a steward of my own estate and I'm just focusing on my family office, yeah, that's what we call it. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with that term. It's like a family office will have an, a, a portfolio or capital or investments and they manage their own family affairs. It's not an institutional fund or it's not a small individual, but it's a family office, meaning like the family has wealth, Rothschild yeah. or the uh, Rockefeller. That's a family office, real large one, but it's mostly incorporated now. But at one point it was a family office. Yeah. Right. So m mostly that. Right. So, okay, cool. So self-development, you're reading some books, you're doing some meditating. Sure. You're staying in the gym. Yes, sir. You do some shooting. Shooting. Yeah. What kind of shooting? Mm -hmm. I'm not in America, so. Please don't tell me you don't believe in guns. What do you mean? I just went to Patia shooting tactical, whatever it's called. I don't want to mess up your guy's name. I was shooting a shotgun. A sniper rifle. They got all the guns. Sign me up, really? I yeah, we'll okay. go there, man. Oh, dude, it's lit. To, really, it's lit. I've I've shot spear spear fishing guns, harpoons underwater. If that counts, he said he didn't shot spear fish. <laughs> all right, so unless fish come out the water and try to take over America, I think you'll be good. But no, yeah, shooting. Wait, hold on, you doing something now? Is you okay with telling people that you're gonna be the next MMA? <laughs> I'm going to compete in my first Muay Thai fight in Thailand. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just looking forward to What made you want to do that? I've done it before and oh, okay. in New Zealand, so I've competed twice. And I just feel like, because Thailand is a promised land, I want to live here for a long time. I want yeah, to yeah. Place here, and we had a conversation. This is a pretty lit place, isn't it? I ain't complaining. Yeah. And there's a good studio here to create content, too. Yes, sir. Description and the link. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, okay, so you do the fight in... You're working out. You like running. Yep. Right? Just trying to cleanse the soul, the body, looking after the body and the mind. See, he had to take it there. Cleanse the soul. Akuma Matata. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. 
Hey, just just trying to live good thoughts because uh, I think younger my younger me wasn't in such a good path, but I think it's just really conversations with people like yourself, you know, people uh, slightly older figures that have kind of steered me in the right direction. So you know, man, I'm I'm grateful to be on this journey. Yeah, yeah. If you say at one point you were a victim or you had a victim mindset, mm. right? What was that? I think growing up, mum was always just like, oh, you don't do that. Oh, that kid has that much. Oh, that family's always doing that. And I think I just kind of received that as a young Asian kid. And I was, I was just like, you know what? The world hates me. So uh, you too? Fuck the world. Yeah, man. I'm black. So we was talking like that all day. American blacks, man, they complain about anything. So I understand. How do you climb out of that? Can I ask? I didn't. I still believed I'm oppressed by the way. <laughs> nah, he's oppressed. I'm oppressed in Thailand. I said, I told my friend one day I was going to like hold a sign and be like, I want free jobs in Thailand. The government promised me free food. Free I want to see what Thai people be. They'd be like, man, you better go get a job with yourself. <laughs> but uh, you know, in America, we have people do that. Mm. But no, uh, I listened to a scholar at one point who basically said, let's say everything you're saying is true. Cause he was like, I ain't about to go back and forth. So what, what you going to do now? Lose or find a way to win. And then that's when I kind of picked up the tools. This would be like, I'm tired of talking about with somebody else. Oh man, they ain't let me in America. It's systematic since the beginning of slavery. I'm like, man, bump all that. I'm going to get busy. No man can beat me. Nobody can outcompete me. No one can outgrind me. They might be smarter. I don't care. I figure a way. I got a smartphone. It's on and cracking. And once I started to like really do that and I started to get return on my investment, I was like, dang, the problem was me. I just didn't fill out a loan application. And it's like, I just found good people. Mm -hmm. I was good to good people and I was good to myself. And then that was it. After that, it all worked itself. I didn't ask for money. I didn't ask for no salary. I was like, I don't care. I want to learn. I'll pay to learn, which people are not familiar with internships no more in this marketplace. I took my human capital and my creativity and sold it like a software. Mm. You want three month free trial and see if I create value for you. And if I do, then join the membership obstacles, the opportunity. That's black. That was nice, wasn't it? So you see what I'm saying? No, that's beautiful. And it's like, it's seriously super inspiring, honestly, because you started in the trenches. You've yeah. got a military background, but you found yourself in real estate investment trust. I think it's completely opposite ends of the spectrum. So different. How did you find the journey? Well, you know, security, counterintelligence, 007 stuff. I was like, <laughs> I liked it. I loved it, you know, mm. but a certain type of quality of life is not had because you have to have these precautions in your life. You always have to look out for friends, get them certified background check on them, you know? Yeah. So you couldn't just fly to Korea, South Korea too. You had to put in the proper paperwork. So at a certain point I was like, I love it, but I just want to live a little bit different. So, you know, respectfully, I left the bureau at that time, FBI, shout out to my FBI oh, fellas. Wow. And I left contract and then I was just like, look, if I work back in my old job for 10 years, making a hundred K, that's a million. I do it in a CD at 4%. That's 40K. I could live off 40K in Thailand. And then along the way, I learned about real estate. I was already invested in the market, doubled down on Tesla and a couple of selected other blue chip companies. And after that, I was just like, man, real estate, I ain't got to pay nothing to get it. And then I learned, and then I found the partners in Israel. I was trying to hook up with friends, normies. I'm like, yo, we get along, we flip it. And da -da. my mom and my sister are like, we just work, all right? Like, I don't know what you talk, what, what, what you talking about, man. I'm like, dang, y'all stupid. In my head, I didn't say this. Yeah. But I was like, man, man, y'all can't do. And then I was like, the problem is me from reaching with people who ain't even on the same thing. So I went to Bigger Pockets, mm -hmm. found relatable people. I was like, hey, man. And I was in Israel at the time. That's when I was like, pardon. Hey, man, let's meet up for a coffee. He, we had a conversation by the beach. I worked 13, woke up, did a meeting for two hours. Went back to sleep for three hours, went back to work again for 13. And a week later, he called me and said, we got something going on. He was like, what you did by yourself is amazing. But then he's like, that's small peanuts. He's like, if you want the big leagues, come with us. I was like, say less. Yeah. And then after that, they gave me a couple tasks. I learned how to find the uh, assets and the property owners they were looking for. Offered me a job as an acquisition manager. No financial background, no education, no degree but creativity and key word when he said 
and he gave me the job. He was like, I want your mind. It's your creativity that I want. And then, of course, I had to pay a toll. So he's like, invest in the project a little bit. I had to put skin in the game. But if I didn't get my money straight and I didn't get everything else straight prior to that, I couldn't even seize the opportunity. Exactly. So you got to be ready. Yeah. Right. Opportunity is all about preparation. You got to be ready prior. So you got to do the self work. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity and you've done the work, right? Talk to him, monk and preacher. Like, dang, bro. Because I was going to say it, but I was like, I'm going to slaughter it. I'm just going to be like, preparation and opportunity I meets. I got you, man. I'm going to my hair after this. Exactly, right? So, no, you said it perfect. I hope this was good. Let me know. How do you feel like the first episode of Investment Audit, how did you think that went? I feel like I definitely learned a lot because in the sense that you don't look at investment as just one, obviously, just linear about money. You tie it into every other aspect of life. So exactly. I think I think I really enjoy that that aspect because I'm on this path of truth and self mastery. So, yeah. Yeah. No, this is this is bloody great. I think you're onto something here. Yeah, I think so. And because you're an ally, I made it simple. Next episode, I'm gonna have a guy on here, man. I mean, he flew to Thailand to start a weed business. So we're gonna be talking about that. He's got crazy life. He's an open book. He's a funny guy, but great guy. And I think it's just going to be a little funny because it's got a little drama that people are like. You didn't have too much drama, man. What's up with this guy, man? Uh, you got one girl. He ain't got three. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Spice it up. No, I'm just kidding. Free agent lifestyle. But no, it's been great having you here, man. I really do appreciate it. You didn't have to come on this podcast. You could have chose any podcast in the world, but you chose to be here on Investment Audit. So I do appreciate it, man. For real. Thank you for your time, Sean. One of the things I always say on this channel is we talk about the difference between gun and butter. You understand? No, right? No. All right. So guns and butter. The butter, car, clothes, jewelry, political drama, right? Who oppressed you? That's butter. That's nonsense. The guns, the lethal stuff, the most important stuff, real estate, stocks, earn income, right? The mm. things that appreciate and quantify value. So on the channel, we like to talk about the difference between guns and butter. So we try to push people away from the butter, the gossip, the drama, the BS, and move them towards guns and be able to really build on their lives. Mm. And as I usually end out on the channel, I always say, we all we got. And that really means about you. You're the only person who got your back in this world. Don't put it on your girl. Don't put it on your mama. Don't put it on your auntie. Don't put it on a politician, the councilman, the monk. Don't put it on nobody because you're the only person you got in the world. And I really try to say we all we got so people can understand. Usually I say it's me versus the world and myself. Mm. That's weird, right? It's like me versus the world. You understand that, right? Yeah. But me versus the world and myself. Meaning you got to go out here and fight the world. You got to go get a new job, fight for the promotion, find the investments. But you also have to fight yourself. When yourself says, go back to sleep, eat that burger, hit the snooze alarm. So you have enough to fight within your own mind, the mind that knows you the best. I don't know. And I don't know how to corrupt you, but your mind knows how to corrupt you perfectly. So focus on fighting your own mind and being the champion of your own life versus your mind. It will take you down a path that you don't want. Some people delete themselves because their mind has taken over their body and their soul. Don't let that happen to you. Take control and do the investment on it. Shout out to you, man.